There's a part of the Fallout games that you never really think about. Looting. You look through any container or corpse you come across in an effort to find items, equipment, and caps. But what if you couldn't loot anything? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas without looting anything? First, let's talk about what looting actually is. If you add an item to your inventory, it's looting. Picking a gun up off the floor is looting. Picking the lock on a safe and taking its contents is looting. If you yourself add an item to your inventory, it's looting. This is where things may get controversial. Without looting, there are two ways to get items. Buying them, or an NPC giving them to you. For example, Sunny Smiles gives you a varmint rifle at the beginning of the game. That isn't looting. Great, we've got our definitions. Did you pay attention? There's gonna be a quiz later. Now onto the game itself. I have the ultimate edition of Fallout New Vegas, so some items are added to my inventory whether I want them to be or not. These items are, effectively, all I'll have to work with throughout the entire playthrough. I say effectively because I… you, you know what, I'll tell you later. I decided to be a boring little Nancy boy and pick speech, barter, and survival as my tag skills. Speech to be boring, barter so that I could get as much ammo and as many stim packs as possible from the few caps I'll have, and survival to have as many hit points as possible. For traits, I chose skilled and good natured. Skilled gives you 5 points in each skill but decreases experience earned by 10%, which can be countered with the swift learner perk when you level up the first time. Good natured increases non-combat skills by 5 points while decreasing combat skills by 5 points. So before I even leave Doc Mitchell's house, my speech skill is up to 50. Here's what I've got to work with. A few sets of armor, most light with 1 medium. For healing items I've got 5 bleak venom, 3 doctor's bags, 9 stim packs, 3 super stim packs, and 4 weapon repair kits. And for weapons, after talking to Sunny Smiles, I have a 9mm pistol, binoculars, a broad machete, a mercenary's grenade rifle, a sturdy caravan shotgun, 10 throwing spears, and a weathered 10mm pistol. This is pretty much all I've got to work with. My first goal was to level up to get that 10% experience boost I mentioned earlier. I fixed Trudy's radio, talked to Ringo, gathered support for the upcoming war against the powder garbage disposals, and let the firefight begin. I used the grenade launcher to kill as many of them as I could, and then a shotgun to pick off the rest. I leveled up, raised lock picking up to 25, and began heading north. You might be wondering why I'd invest in lock picking. I can't take anything from the containers I crack open, but I can get the experience from it, which is pretty useful. At 10 XP a pop, the bark scorpions surrounding Hidden Valley turned out to be a nice little treat, as did the nearby centaurs, though they were a bit harder to take down. Harder still were the super mutants and nightkin atop Black Mountain. I died many times trying to take them out. Eventually, I was able to free Raoul, much to Tabitha's dismay. Together, we killed Tabitha, I leveled up again, and things were looking… decent. As I headed towards the strip, I got myself into quite a pickle thanks to some horribly timed quick saves, three death claws to my back, and nowhere to go. I tried to outrun them. It didn't work. I reloaded an older save, and took a safer route to the strip. I took a quick stop inside Repcon headquarters for some reason. Not sure why, I didn't even do anything in there. Soon after discovering Camp McCarran, I went next door and killed all the freeloaders in the El Rey Motel. Next, I was off to a fiend infested vault. I charmed my way inside, threw a spear at Motor Runner's skull, killed as many fiends as I could, as well as their prisoners, and left. My desire for blood had not yet been satisfied, so I entered some building, killed Duke, and leveled up yet again. By this point, I was up to level 8. I didn't have enough caps to enter the strip, and I couldn't disguise myself as an NCR soldier because I couldn't take any armor off any corpse, so I used two more spears to take out the soldiers guarding the monorail. Here's where some strategy comes into play. I need the platinum chip, but I can't take it from Benny, which means I can't kill him. The only way to get it is to make him flee to the fort. That also means I'll have to survive the ambush in his hotel room, being completely unarmed against guys with guns. Luckily, I had put some points into luck, so I was able to land a few critical hits and take out Benny's goons. Yes Man was only an elevator trip away, so I stopped by and said hello. 
I also picked a bunch of locked doors, which granted me a cool 48 XP each. Cottonwood Cove was where I was headed next. Nothing particularly interesting happened on the way out there. I broke my legs a few times, macheted the absolute shit out of a dog, and traveled to the fort. There were a couple different ways I could handle the situation. Caesar gave me the platinum chip. I could have installed the upgrades for Mr. House. I could have just left and done nothing. I could have had Benny crucified. I chose option Q, the one where I free Benny and run like hell past all the people who wanted to kill me. With some Mirror's Edge level bobbing and weaving through some tents, I was able to travel back to Cottonwood Cove, sink into the river like a rock, and float away to safety. There was just one small problem. I forgot Raul. I told him to wait outside Caesar's tent, and I just sorta ignored him, but with all the screaming and everything. Unfortunate, to be sure, but I'm not going back for him, nor am I reloading an old save. What's done is done, and what is done may never be undone. My next objective was Red Rock Canyon. Rather than doing something incredibly theatric or obscenely stupid, I arrived, made a mental note that they exist, and left. Not gonna bother killing all of them this time. Thankfully, I discovered Hidden Valley earlier, which made contacting the Brotherhood much easier. They locked the door behind me, which made an assault a fruitless endeavor. So I did as the Elder commanded, and handled the NCR Ranger. And guess what? Your belongings are not automatically given back. They're put in a chest, a chest that you must open. Every single item I had was now lost forever. My weapons, my armor, my ammo, my poison, even my caps were all gone. I thought this might happen, which is why I had a backup plan. I made a stop by the Silver Rush. Simon took all my nothing and put it into a chest before I entered the building. He gave me a sweet suit of combat armor and a plasma rifle. I ditched that loser and went back to the Lucky 38 to remove Mr. House from the equation, but not before using my barter skill to negotiate my way up to 1250 caps for turning over the platinum chip. With caps in my pocket and a gun in my hands, I slaughtered that cannibal fuck Mortimer. That was a lie. I gave his bottom a good wallop before running away. I did the same thing to a guy in Gamora, just with fewer interactions with his bottom. I wasn't about to waste time leveling up my energy weapon skill, so I went to the Gunrunners to sell all the two things I had to my name. The Van Graaff combat armor was worth a stupid 5,000 caps. With my newfound fortune, I got myself a mint conditioned Gunrunners battle rifle, an assortment of normal, hollow point, and armor piercing rounds, a combat helmet, and a worn but still usable suit of recon armor. I also stopped by the New Vegas Medical Clinic to heal my radiation and get infused impacts. All that's left to do is meet the boomers, and then we can proceed to the end game. I blindly clicked speech options when talking to George on the road leading to Nellis. He started running forward and ended up getting blown up. My battle rifle turned out to be pretty effective against the frail old witch named Pearl, also against Raquel and other guy. That boring nonsense was over. Yes Man installed himself into the Lucky 38 mainframe. I ignored President Kimball's assassination plot, again, and went to the El Dorado gas station to revert some power. The battle for... Uh, whatever. You know what's going on. The gosh darned centurions went and crippled my head. Bunch of Melvins is what they are. I spent about 80 years drinking from a dirty sink in the Hoover Dam offices. Guess what? They don't heal you. Or me. They don't heal me. Maybe it's a glitch, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm not pissed off about it. One of those is a lie. After taking out those armored NCR soldiers with two quick shots to the dome, I installed Yes Man and began the search for a bed. I even went so far as to go all the way back to the entrance of Olive's compound, only to discover that there was a room full of beds just down the hall. Me brain fixed good, no hurt more. The Securitrons made the push towards the Legate's camp relatively easy. Have I said that before? I probably have. Maybe that guy was right. Maybe I am a speaking spell. Anyway, I used my maxed out speech skill to talk the Legate down from his figurative ledge, explained how poorly things would go for Oliver if he didn't heed my warning, and beat Fallout New Vegas without looting anything. So, what have we learned today, my children? Nothing. I've wasted your time with yet another one of my videos. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout New Vegas without looting anything. 
If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.